Hello once again and welcome to another episode of Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock. On today's episode, we'll be talking about women's basketball as well as track and field. And frankly, Chris will have another wolf tale for us. But joining me first, Bailey Dryman and Tia King from the women's basketball team. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. <laughs> well, uh, let's just start off and get your thoughts on how the season's going. Bailey, we'll start with you. Um, well, we're still pretty young, all sophomores and freshmen. Um, I love it. I love that we're young. Like, we have a lot of energy and... Um, I think we came out like everyone was really excited to start the season and you know we played a lot of ranked teams during the beginning of the season so uh, that was kind of rough because you know we are so young and we don't see a lot of experienced teams like that but um, getting into conference play we're playing really well right now um, and I just hope that we're going to keep it up. So. Now you mentioned that you're a young team do you think that if the whole team stays together how do you think that will make the team in your junior and senior season? Oh, I think we could be like something so special. Like we're already such a special group, um, just being the first ones to play here and all that. But um, also just being able to know each other's tendencies and right. like know like a pass is coming before anyone else sees it. Like we're just gonna have that chemistry, and that's that could help us so much whenever right. we're juniors and seniors. And Tia, how do you think the season's going? Mm, I think it's going pretty good. I feel some games we we let let go right. and we should have won those but it's all a learning experience so i'd rather us lose back then than now because this is when it counts so we got the bumps out right. the way and so now it's time to buckle down and get to business and just take every game serious right. well bailey mentioned the uh, in conference play now for the rest of the season at 3-0 this past week we'll start breaking down each game uh bailey tell us about the 68 to 60 win over cincinnati christian there at wright state um being able to play at Wright State, that was a really cool uh, experience for us. Yeah, you know, Cincinnati Christian had already played there a couple times, I think. Right. But, you know, we wanted to come out there. We had we had some fans there. We had a lot of the parents come. You know, uh, the men's team was there to support us, and it was just a good atmosphere. It was it was right. cool to play on that court. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're a good ball club. Just, like, we're in a really tough conference. So every time we have a conference game, you have to come ready to play. And, you know, they came ready. And, um I think we just came out with more energy. We had a game right. plan, we stuck to it, and we came out with a win. And your thoughts on that game, Tia? Well, like she <laughs> said, I can't, I can't say nothing after that. <laughs> but we were just sticking to the game plan, right. and we win the games we're supposed to. So we just took it as that, and we don't show any mercy. We can't let up, and especially, right. like, on the other teams that we're going against in the capital division. Right. So just playing against them gets us prepared for the next game ahead. All right, then you played two days later. It was against Ohio Christian on the road, 74-70 to 70 win there. Tell us about that game, Tia. Um, the same game plan coach said that every game is important. It's the most important game of the season. So we just went out there, and we wanted to play as a family and together, and that's what we had to do. There was some bumps down the road. We got ahead by, like, 20 points or so, and we kind of let up at the end. And afterwards, we had, a, we had to sit down and talk about it, how we can't let up because on certain teams, if we let up, it's the end of the game, and that – we lost, right. but we didn't, and we got lucky there. So we just had to put it together and get prepared for the next game, which we did, and we came out better and put a whole game together. And like Tia said, almost a 20-point lead there late in the second half, then ended up winning by four. Uh, what caused you guys to let up, just get comfortable with the lead? Um, I think it was just definitely something we did because we're so young, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I think if we had a little bit more under our belt, we'd know – we can never take a team lightly. It doesn't right. matter how much we're winning by because, like I said, our conference, our conference is so tough, they're right back in the game. Right. Like, you sleep on somebody for two minutes in the fourth quarter and they're right there. So, I mean, we can't let that happen anymore, definitely. All right. Well, then on Saturday, able to get a rematch against Rio Grande, took the win there. Uh, tell us about that game, Tia. Um, it was a big rival game, and we started down in a slump. They got a pretty decently I think it was like 2 to 11 at one point and we just had to come together and realize like this is conference it's right. going to see who's going to be number one in our division or not so we just took that and we just played together as a family again and then we just knew our roles we knew who was supposed to rebound we knew who we were supposed to match up with we knew the whole game plan we stuck to it because the first game we had a game plan we had got back in the lead and then we didn't stick with it the rest of it but this time we finally put a game together and even though like turnovers you know it happens but a win is a win and so we still stuck to our game plan which got us the dub at the end of the day right well after losing to Rio by 13 earlier this month what was it like to be able to get that five-point win against Rio at home Bailey um, 
apparently we play really, really good at home. So mm -hmm. like that was a really awesome feeling to, to like know that we play so well at home right. and it's like we have Rio at home this weekend like we're gonna get this like we we were just so excited to play them and and it's it's nice to have that in basketball where mm -hmm. you're excited to play these other great teams but it is a rival and I mean when we're out there both teams are out there for blood and it's right. just really nice to be able to come out on our home court and be like we're not letting this league go like we got it and we handled it and we stuck with it. Why do you guys think you play so much better at home than you do on the road? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> 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 I have no idea. Um, I mean, we go in there and we work hard in practice, and I think it, it does come from practice. So we get in there and we're getting shots up. So during games, whenever we're at home, we're just like, just like we're in practice. We'll just sit back and I, I guess that's it. But <laughs> All I'm right. not sure. Well, in the Rio game, you also scored your 1,000th career point here at IU East. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Um, at first, it was it was tough to get six points. It was, it's never <laughs> taken me that long to get six points. But I got it. And right. after that, it was just like stress free. I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. that. Like that being on my mind now is game time. So I just do what I have to do. All right. Well, with these last few games all being uh, conference games out of the Capital Division, you've not seen these teams yet this season. Do you think that's going to make it a little bit tougher uh, since you only have the scouting report and the film to go off of? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely, you could use like Rio as an example. Like we won't get another second try, right. you know. So it's it's one it's one or nothing, and we have to be prepared to come mm -hmm. in. Like with our game film, we've been watching a lot of film. Uh, we've been walking through a lot of teams' plays. Like we're just we're really working on being prepared right now because uh, whenever we're prepared, we play like we know yeah. how to play. So. And what would it mean in order to win the conference this year for you guys and get a berth to the national tournament, Tia? Um, it'll be a lift off our shoulders going into the conference tournament because mm -hmm. I like having that cushion knowing we're going anyways is just going to give us even more confidence right. to win the tournament. But if we go into the tournament and we didn't win the conference, it's going to be like win or go home pretty much right. and we don't get a second chance. Like even though it's not good to think like, oh, if we lose, we're still going to nationals, but it's good to know like we're still going. Like we can go <laughs> and we can win right. this conference tournament. And we won the conference as a whole. Right. Sounds better. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. It's just it's not really important to mm -hmm. get it now. We realize that as freshmen, like we will lose, and you're just like, oh, we lost. It's all right. But right. then those winning and losing is really important because it determines who's going to go and who's right. not going to go to nationals. And what would that mean to go to the national tournament in the second year as a program, Bailey? Um, man, that'd be so amazing. Right. Uh, that would just be such an honor for us to be able to be there and uh, be around all these other teams and just a part of everything. You know, our men's mm -hmm. team's been going like a lot of the, since their program started, and right. um, you just see that and it makes us want it. Like we're hungry for it, and we we got a taste for it last year. I feel like we were really close, yeah. and now it's just it's kind of sour because we, right. we want to be there, and and I think that's showing right now in conference play with like how much we are playing. Like how Tia said, um, right. we come out in conference and we're winning these games, and it's just going to take a lift off of our shoulders when that tournament comes around. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me, and best of luck thank Tuesday you. at IU Southeast. Thank, thank you. you. There you have it from Bailey Dryman and Tia King talking about how this past week went for the women's basketball team. We'll be right back with more Inside IU Sports. This is where a busy mom can work toward a bachelor's degree from a top national university during softball practice. It's where a service member can continue his college studies from anywhere in the world and where you'll benefit from one of the country's most effectively delivered online programs. Woohoo! So, if you've ever wondered if a college education is really worth it, this is where you'll see that it is. This is Indiana University East Online. Welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Franklin Christ, and joining me in this special edition of Wolf Tales today is Assistant Athletic Director Kyle Wright and Voice of the Red Wolves, Caleb Gillock. G guys, 
uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Hey, no problem. Always a pleasure. Uh, also, in this uh, this segment here, we're going to talk a little bit about the KIAC standings for both the men's and women's basketball. And um, Kyle, you being the knowledgeable guy that you are within this, go ahead and talk to us a little bit about the uh, the bids and how the seating works within well, the conference Well, sure. We'll tournament. just break down, because the, there's been a lot of changes in the last couple of years as far as just how the conference tournament works. Uh, it used to be everyone got in. Now, not the case. And also, for the longest time, the Kentucky Intercollegiate Athletic Conference was what was considered a one-bid league. Uh, sure. In other words, only the conference only had one automatic bid for the conference tournament. Uh, now there's two, so that's uh, a whole other system for how they decide who's going to get to go to uh, the national tournament as well. So the, the conference tournament's fairly straightforward. There's two divisions, uh, six teams each. Uh, in one women's division, there's seven because we have Midway College, which is an all-women's sure. uh, school. Uh, so the top four teams in each division qualify for the conference tournament. Uh, that's fairly straightforward. You can just look at the standings and see who's in the top four, and that's who's going to be in the conference tournament. Uh, now the the, as far as how the bracketing is determined for the conference tournament, uh, that's a little different. Um, we're kind of in Big Ten country, so we're used to the Big Ten tournament being seeded a certain way. Uh, they actually use kind of more of the uh, Southeastern Conference basketball tournament model. Uh, so we're used to, for instance, the number one team plays the number eight team, the number two, number seven, and so forth. Uh, not so much. This way, uh, what they do is the number one team from one division uh, plays the number four team from the other division. And then in the same half of the bracket, the second place team from what we're calling the other division plays the third place team from the first place team, and I know I've got a lot of numbers going, that's on the same side. So basically, sure. if everything goes according to form, you've got the first place team from one division playing the second place team from the other division in the second round, and then the opposite happening on the bottom half of the bracket. Sure. So the idea is if the top two teams actually happen to be from the same division, they'll wind up in the conference tournament final. So sure. uh, it looks a little convoluted, and I do wish I'd had a dollar for every time I've tried to explain it because I could uh, retire from, from yeah, about yeah. every job. But, but uh, <laughs> uh, for those that have grown up in SEC country, which uh, some of our Kentucky counterparts in the conference have, uh, that's something they've grown up with. But for us, since we've kind of grown up with the, the Big Ten model, it's a little much to, to wrap our minds around. Um, and I haven't even got to the part about how you go to the national tournament. Um, <laughs> again, there, there could be three champions. You could have a conference tournament champion, you could have one division champion, and then a second division champion, and there's only two bids. So we've got a situation where you could be a conference champion in a given year and not get to go to the national tournament because mm. we've only got the, the two bids instead of three. Uh, to be sure that you're going to the to the national tournament, if you win the conference tournament, you're in. You're into the national tournament. If you are the division champion with the best conference record, you're in. You're going to the national tournament. Uh, where it gets fun is if that is the same team. Because uh, so, then we've got um, one team that's qualified for a bid two different ways, and we've still got another bid to figure out here. Sure. So uh, if the team that uh, has the best overall conference record also wins the conference tournament, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the other division champion gets the second bid. So we've got uh, two teams that won championships. Uh, they're going to the national tournament. Sure. Uh, now, if the team that was not the best team in the regular season, uh, if someone else, anyone else but that number one seed, if they win the conference tournament, then uh, the, what the team that was the number one seed, they get the bid. They get the other one that's what's left. Okay. Uh, we had an example of both last year in the men's and women's conference tournaments, which uh, IU East was a factor of both. Uh, on the men's side, IU East was the overall number one seed. Um, so we knew going into the conference tournament, we were going to the national tournament. Uh, and it just so happened it came down to IU East and Point Park in the championship game. Uh, Brescia um, had, was the other division champion, so they were sitting there pulling harder for IU East probably than IU East was because if we win that game they get that other bid. Uh, if IU East had lost Point Park would have got the bid. We still go. Brescia was out of luck. So that was one way it worked. Okay. Uh, on the women's side it was the opposite. Uh, IU East knocked out the number one seed Rio Grande in the semifinals. They probably weren't happy, but it wasn't the end of the world for them because they still had a, a bid to the national tournament going. So yeah. what that set up was IU East against Asbury in the conference tournament championship game, uh, and that was a case where winner got the bid. Um, Asbury won the game. Uh, they got the other bid. If IU East had defeated Asbury, uh, we would have gone. Uh, Ryo Green still would have gone because they had the number one overall seed, and Asbury would have been out of luck. So sure. uh, that kind of covers all the possible scenarios. Again, wish I had a dollar for every time I've got to explain <laughs> it. So if you're watching and enjoying this, uh, you can send a send the, the cash payments my way because uh, <laughs> uh, we've gotten to explain this quite a bit. Check payable to, to Kyle Ride. Yes. But uh, Kyle, or um, Caleb, we got a chance to do a show actually back right. before the, uh, the conference season had started. Um, I know it's, it's probably tough to kind of look back and remember right. those picks per se, but uh, are there really any surprises um, on IUE side in the capital, or I'm sorry, the uh, Colonial Division that really stick out to you right now? 
Not really a whole lot. I mean, the I think we all kind of anticipated both IU East and Point Park being up at the top. I know we also talked to Ohio Christian, uh, the WVU Tech teams. We thought they would be a little bit higher up there, too. Uh, sure. Obviously, Ohio Christian's been a team to be reckoned with this season. Uh, IU East just lost to them by, I think, what, six this past week. Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously, they're a team that can't, that are not eligible for the conference or national tournament, but a big team that we, uh, I think we all expect to see a lot out of this year. Yeah, and I think rightfully so. They, they got a lot of uh, respect in the preseason poll yeah. as well on the men's side, mm -hmm. and um, I think they've been a, a pretty good addition to the conference. Um, but uh, what, do you, what do you see going forward for IU East? What do you think they've had to do now? They've had to, to battle some issues with, um, you know, some, with players uh, not being on the team anymore and, you know, right. some other things, health issues. Um, but what do, you, what do you see their future looking like coming down towards the end of the stretch of the season? Well, I Obviously, I mean, there's, what, five games left here in the season coming sure. up. So the big thing is just going to be, you know, winning all five of those games to lock in that berth to the national tournament, uh, obviously, if you're an IUE fan. But, uh, you know, you've got the Asbury game. That's going to be a big game. Uh, even the Alice Lloyd game. I mean, they're, they're a team that's, you know, you don't hear a whole lot about them yet this season, but they're also up there in the Capital Division. So it's going to be a team to look out for. But like you said, uh, with some of the adjustments that's been made with some of the players and stuff, big deal is just going to be everybody coming up and showing up to play at every game. Sure. And uh, on the other hand, avoiding injuries at the same time too. Sure. Now let's flip it over to the women's side on the, the Colonial Division again, the, the uh, division that IU East is in. Um, we both did not have them at number one. And right now, <laughs> right. you know, playing, playing very well, um, in my opinion, and opinion of a lot of the, you know, the coaches and, uh, you know, people that really follow the mm -hmm. KIAC. So uh, for the both of you guys, what do you, what do you see um, has been something that they've really done that's really propelled them into that number one spot? Uh, one thing with the, it's really been more or less the same team for two years now, and sure. uh, Iowa women when they play well, pretty much they win regardless of the opposition, and uh, the, the opposite happens to be true as well. When they don't play well, uh, they can pretty much lose on any given night. Right. But uh, when they play well, they win. They kind of figured that out in the conference tournament last year, pulling off a couple of what on paper were upsets uh, to reach the conference tournament championship game, and uh, in would have been some of the bigger games, which to us, uh, the two-point park games, and then uh, really both uh, Rio Grande games, even though one of those uh, got away. Uh, if you look at stat-wise, IU East has played well, and then they're a team where it sounds so obvious. They play well, they win. They play badly, they lose. So a lot of teams aren't like that. There's a lot of teams out there that uh, can play bad and find a way to win and vice versa. Sure. They, they've showed up in the games that have counted, so that's something that uh, you certainly hope would happen in the, the final month of the regular season. Sure. Kale, briefly your input? Well, yeah, I mean, sort of go off what Kyle was saying. I know during some of the post-game interviews when I've talked to the girls, you know, their big thing is they like to show up for the big games. But then at the same time, they also – seems like sometimes uh, not quite as much as some of the games where, you know, okay, we've beat them once already. And then, you know, a prime example of that being the Ohio Christian game. Come, uh, up 20 points, then end up winning by four. Right? Yeah, yeah. The game sort of let up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, every game here on out is going to be a big game for the women's team. So, sure. I mean, it'll be interesting, just like Kyle said, you know, they've definitely showed up in the big games this season, though. Sure. Well, guys, I uh, appreciate the both of you joining me today, um, given your, your input on the conference tournament and, and so yeah. forth. And uh, for those of you following Wolf Tales, we'll see you again next time. Dylan Newman had a terrible dislocated shoulder after a bad dirt bike accident. The long-term solution, surgery and intense rehab. I trusted Reed Orthopedics because they had already fixed my ankle. And within four months of my surgery, Dr. Miller and my Reed therapist, April, helped me to regain my motion and most of my strength. Thanks to Reed Ortho, I can get back to what I love. It's all about trust. Right, Dr. Miller? Right here at Reed. Right here in Richmond. And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. It's time to talk about track and field with some of our track and field runners, uh, Seth Reynolds and Trisha Spivey. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. Thanks for having us. Well, I'll just start off by telling us a little bit about your high school careers and uh, what all brought you here to IUE. So we'll start with you, Trisha. Um, so I've been doing track since uh, middle school, and it's just something that I really like to do. It's something I've, uh, I'm really passionate about, and mm -hmm. I wanted to continue that on in college. So. Do you have any other hobbies outside of track? Uh, not really, that's Not it. Really. That's <laughs> track. it. <laughs> what about you, Seth? Uh, I started running track my junior year. Uh, I turned out to be pretty good at it, making it to state my first couple years. Okay. And then I decided that that's something I could continue to build on. So I decided, and IU East was close, 
So I decided to go to IU East. All right. So what made you choose IU East? Um, I've heard really great things about their nursing program because mm -hmm. I, I would hope to be in that. And it's close. It's better for me financially. And it's just it's a really good deal. It's a right. good school. Now, with both of you being in the nursing program, how do you guys? How are you guys able to balance nursing and being an athlete? So, uh, I think that it, uh, the way that our practices are set up, how we have early practice in the morning, mm -hmm. it gives us a lot of free time throughout the day to be able to do our homework and study. So it actually helps a lot having the early practices. All right. How yeah, about you? most definitely. No room for procrastination. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, just start uh, out by talking about this past try and meet. Uh, tell us, tell us a bit about how it went. Um, for me personally, it wasn't my best meet. Um, I really hoped that I would get some better results than what I did, mm -hmm. but I was able to finish third um, out of the, I think there were 11 girls there approximately. And with five feet, it wasn't my best, but I know that I, I learned a lot from it, mm -hmm. and so I'll be able to take that with me to my to the meet at Anderson University right. um, next Saturday. But that's basically it for me. And how did the women's team do as a whole? Um, I really don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think Gotta we appreciate did, an honest answer. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I know that we had some really good individual scores. All right. How about the men's team and your individual performance? Uh, for my individual performance, I finished third in the hurdles. Uh, I continue to drop my time lower from last meet, so I'm happy about that. And then for my first meet, high jump in this year, since I just started right. this week, I got six, so I'm happy with that, and I'm excited to keep going on with mm -hmm. that. And then for the team, I know I saw quite a bit of people uh, do very well in their in their uh, mm -hmm. relays and in their individual performances. So right. you can definitely tell that we have people that are good and prepared mm -hmm. to run this year. What are some things that you think you need to work on personally? Confidence for me, most confidence. definitely. Being in college and being around or being surrounded by so many different people at right. different levels. In high school, yeah. it was basically one <laughs> level, and you got used to your competitors. But college, right. it's it's a lot different. So mm -hmm. just confidence level, making sure that you're on top of everything and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Uh, for me, I would say technique, going for hurdles and high jump, but those are very technical. And uh, like she said, confidence. There's a lot more people that are better than in high school. Right. Now, uh, what about the teams? What do you think the team needs to work on going into the spring season? That's all you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, well, around this part of the year, it's kind of hard to stay enthusiastic about everything with mm -hmm. 5 a.m. practices every morning and, you know, coach killing us like he did this morning. We're, we're all tired and we're all dead, but, you know, just bringing that out, we need to fight past that and make sure that we get to right. where we want to go. All right, and that's going to help you later on down the road, oh, especially yeah. in the spring season. Oh, right? yeah, most definitely. All right, what do you think some of the things the guys team needs to work on? Uh, some of the things that I guess we could work on is... Uh, you have no idea. No. <laughs> okay. That's a tough one. All right. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and go on, uh, take a look at the Anderson meet coming up. Uh, what do you expect to see there? Yeah, um, I expect everybody to have really good individual results. We've wor all worked really hard to get where we're at, and I think we're just going to put a good final end to our indoor season. All right. How about you? Uh, through the past two meets, I see everyone's times improving. I expect it to improve again through Anderson. Uh, we had some really good results, and... I think people are going to be really motivated to break some records in our last indoor meet because I know our 4x4 team was really trying hard to break that record. So hopefully they can get to this meet. And how do you think that uh, being able to go to these indoor meets this winter, how do you think that's going to help you guys coming up for the spring outdoor season? I'll start with you. Uh, I think that it's going to really like, prepare us because we already have the momentum coming in from the indoor season mm -hmm. and we've been already running because I know previous years we haven't had many indoor right. meets. so. We're going to be a lot more prepared this year. Mm -hmm. how about it's you? a really big confidence booster. We've right. already been there. We've done a few meets. So going in outdoor, we'll be, we'll be ready. All right. So outside of track and nursing, what are some other things that you guys are involved in? I play basketball when you I get the chance to. That's right. my favorite thing to do on campus. Right. I really enjoy trying to get games going with friends. Just go down to the graph and play is what you do? Yep. Then? All right. Same so you're going to try to get on that three-on-three -three tournament coming up? Yeah. I think you'll see me. All right. And what about you? Um, I don't know. I, I'm a part of SAC here okay. at IUE, so that's something that um, I like to be involved with. And But other than that, not really anything. With school and with track, I, right. I don't have a lot of time to do right. a lot of other stuff. All right. Well, I'll thank uh, both of you for joining me here today. Mm -hmm. And best of luck coming up at the Anderson Meet coming up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it from Seth Reynolds and Trisha Spivey talking about how the track season went at Trine and a look ahead to Anderson. We'll be right back with more Inside IUE Sports right after this.
And welcome back to Inside High UE Sports. That sound you just heard means that it is time for Wolf Center. Wolf Center is where we take a look back at last week's IU East results and ahead to next week's schedule. You can download the Wolf House sound you just heard for free by downloading the free IU East Athletics app at the iTunes App Store or at Google Play. Now let's take a look back at last week's IU East results. On January 26th, the women's basketball team defeated Cincinnati Christian 68-60. Kerrigan Ehoff had 19 points along with 15 rebounds. Also on January 26th, the men's basketball team defeated 25th ranked Cincinnati Christian University 73-64. Flashe Davis had 15 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. On January 28th, the women's basketball team beat Ohio Christian on the road 74-70. Bailey Dryman had 15 points and 7 rebounds for the Red Wolves. Also on the 28th of January, the men's basketball team fell to Ohio Christian 62-54. Lucas Huffman had 11 points for IU East. On January 29th, the women's track and field team was at the Trine Classic. Trissa Spivey placed third in the high jump for the Red Wolves. Also on January 29th, the men's track and field team was at the Trine Classic. Seth Reynolds placed third in 60 meter hurdles and sixth in the high jump. On January 30th, the women's basketball team defeated Rio Grande at home 84 to 79. Tia King had 17 points and 10 rebounds while scoring her 1,000th career point during her sophomore season. Also on January 30th, the men's basketball team defeated Rio Grande 78-74. Parker Salinas had 15 points for IU East. Now taking a look ahead at the schedule, on February 6th, the track and field teams will be at the Anderson Invite. This will be at 3 p.m. at Anderson University in Anderson, Indiana. On February 9th, the women's basketball team will be at IU Southeast in New Albany, Indiana. Tip-off is at 6 p.m. The men's basketball team will also be at IU Southeast on February 9th. Tip-off at 8 p.m. in New Albany, Indiana. Both games will be live at IUERedWolves.com. On February 11th, the women's basketball team will travel to IU Kokomo. Tip-off is scheduled for 5 p.m. Also on February 11th, the men's basketball team will take on the IU Kokomo Cougars. Tip-off at 7 p.m. with live coverage at IUERedWolves.com. That concludes this week's episode of Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.